Hi, and welcome to the last installment of Mission Subterranean, how the Earth's surface changes from above and below due to weathering and the forces inside the Earth. So in this installment, we're scrolling on down past weathering, past continental drift to the idea of plate tectonics. So when we left off, we said, even with herd elephants, how are you going to push a continent around? And that was a problem for a while. We had a great idea, but just no why. Like, why would they move? So it was during World War II when another scientist called Harry Hess had a new technology that allowed him to do a little bit more peaking at the bottom of the ocean, which had never been seen before. As you can see, the bottom of the ocean is simply a big blue place, but if you remove all of the water, then you can see some very interesting things. So let's take a look at what those things might be. So let's first start off with the lithosphere. What is the lithosphere? So it just so happens that the lithosphere, it just so happens that the lithosphere is that solid stone layer that we are on and it's broken up into plates. There are about seven main plates, if you count them up, with lots and lots of little smaller plates. And the main plates would be North America, Eurasia, Africa, South America, Arabian Peninsula, Antarctic Plate, Pacific Plate, etc. Whatever ones are named just are fine. What does it rest on? Well, on top of the plate would be the continents or uh, the ocean. On what layer does the plate float? Well, it floats on the layers called the mantle, specifically in the asthenosphere. Describe the upper part of the mantle. Well, it very move, moves very slowly, kind of like maybe the wax of a melted candle or super hot plastic. So it's not really like sloshing around inside the earth like a big a ball of water, it's actually kind of oozy and gooey. Let's go down here to convection currents, which we've talked about many times in the atmosphere and inside the Earth. The same process occurs. So a convection current is caused by differences in the temperature. Hotter things rise, cooler things sink. Scientists think that the movement is caused by D, convection currents. The mantle uh, rock close to the center of the Earth is going to be older. Oh, sorry. The center of the Earth is hotter, and then as you go out, it is colder. The center of the Earth is called the core, and if you add cold water to a container, the cold water will sink and the warmer water will rise. That's, again, movement based on density or convection. Put those all back, and let's move on to the plate movements. So the plate movements here can be in a couple of different versions. One, they move together, convergent, but one goes under subduction. Move together, convergent, but they both push up. No volcanoes are formed, but earthquakes can form. That's mountain building. Here, they're moving apart. That's divergent. And here, you just kind of need to look from the top, but they're moving side by side. Can't really see that from the side, so we look from the top, and they're moving in this direction. So, Seafloor spreading would be the place where, if you had two mountain range, slowly they get pushed apart, causing new land to be formed in between. So, very quickly, mountains are only found on continents. Well, that's false. You can find mountains on the bottom of the ocean, too. Underwater mountain chain is called the Mid-Ocean Ridge. So that's true. Ocean crust uh, formed at the mid-ocean ridge, that's true. Oceanic crust near the mid-ocean ridge is older than far away, that's false. It's newest in the middle and older far away. Last but not least, seafloor spreading supports plate tectonics. 
That's true. 